Now we are looking at transgenic crops. What are the beneficial effects of transgenic crops in Indian agriculture? When you take transgenic crops, transgenic crops are genetically modified. They are genetically, genetically modified and we have several applications of transgenic crops. A very important application of transgenic crop is you can develop transgenic tomato. Now transgenic tomato is popularly called as commercially called as flavor saver tomato. The flavor saver tomato is a tomato which is developed by genetic engineering and it prevents softening of the sort of a tomato. So under extreme cold conditions the tomato does not soft or it does not lead to rot of the tomato. Thereby, it increases the shelf value of tomato or the keeping quality of tomato. Thereby, in transit, tomatoes can stay for a very long time and it has got a lot of commercial applications in with relation to development of tomato ketchups sauces. The second important application in with relation to transgenic crops relates to rice. In rice, we have one variety of rice called the golden rice which has been developed by Potricus and Bayer. And transgenic rice has been one success experiment with relation to transgenic, uh, transgenics. So in the case of rice, the golden rice is fortified, is biofortified that is it is enriched with vitamin A. Because rice is enriched with vitamin A, it plays a very important role with relation to preventing blindness in poor underdeveloped countries, especially with relation to children. So children who are fed with transgenic rice have the sort of a rice which is biofortified or which is enriched with vitamin A which can prevent blindness. Thereby we understand here we have a sort of an application wherein we take biotechnology which has got a sort of a long term effect. For long term, for several generations, people would primarily who hover or consuming transgenic rice would never have the sort of a situation of blindness. Then third, we will also be learning about Bt cotton which in Bt cotton we have got the Bacillus thuringiensis. The Bacillus thuringiensis spore produces the toxin, the N endotoxin which when consumed by the insect in its epithelial gut in the presence of an alkaline pH becomes toxic and it can lead to killing of the sort of an insect. Thereby, we have the development of Bt cotton as well as Bt brinjol which are all important sources of biopesticide, a microorganism which can function as a sort of a biopesticide for the control of very important pests in cotton and brinjol. Then we come to brassica that is all the sort of a, the, the mustard family. In the mustard family, we can develop transgenic brassicas. Now transgenic brassicas are transgenic mustard plants into which we can put the sort of a gene which synthesizes hirudin. Hirudin is a very important blood clot factor. So thereby we can exactly transfer the hirudin gene through the sort of a brassicas. Next we come to herbicide resistant crops. When you take the herbicide resistant crops, the most popular of the herbicide resistant crops are the maize and soya bean. So in maize and soya bean, we have developed primarily transgenic crops which are termed as Roundup Ready depending upon the name of the company. It is called Roundup Ready and this is the commercial name and Roundup Readies are, are varieties of maize and soya bean which have been developed by transgenic technology and they are herbicide resistant. Next we have the wheat plant. Wheat plant that is Zia maize is also developed for resistance to pesticides and we have a local variety which is called Besta. Besta is nothing but an application of wheat which is transgenic to pesticides. Potato, Solanum tuberosum is improved by transgenics by biotechnology, it has been improved for higher starch content. Tobacco is improved for nematode resistance which is popular in the roots. We will be learning more about tobacco as well as even golden rice and also about flavor saver tomato at a later period. Then we have basmati rice. Basmati rice is a transgenic rice which has been developed for biotic as well as abiotic resistance. And we have several sort of a fruit strains among them being papaya. Papaya is resistant to viral resistance. So when you take papaya, 
papaya is resistant to ring spot virus it is resistant to ring spot virus so transgenic papaya are developed so that it becomes more resistant to ring spot virus and similarly if you take cotton we understand cotton primarily it is resistant to insects it is resistant to insects and tomato primarily it is resistant again to a bacterial pathogen which is termed as pseudomonas tomato is resistant to pseudomonas which is a sort of a bacterial pathogen then again potato is resistant to a very very important we can read potato which is very very important for a pathogen which is termed as phytophthora phytophthora infestations has led to a disease which is termed as late blight of potato which has led to lot of epidemics and the migration of the europeans to america so here if you want to breed potato for resistance to phytophthora has well as tomato to pseudomonas which is a very famous sort of a pathogen of tomato we can develop them by means of transgenic engineering now similarly when you take food processing as i told you in the case of tomato it becomes resistant if flavor saver tomato gets resistant to primarily for against softening and thereby it, you can improve a sort of a tomato for primarily for making it more hard it is it so that you can improve its sort of a storage value you can enable it for better transport and it is primarily for delayed ripening it is for delayed ripening and long shelf value and similarly when you take rice when you take rice rice is improved for higher nutrition quality the nutrition quality in the case of rice is very very important it is enriched with vitamin a to prevent blindness and even in the case of uh, brassicas brassicas we can develop male sterile lines we can develop msl lines or male sterile lines now male sterile lines primarily enable the sort of a male pollen to be sterile so that we can easily pollinate the entire sort of a crops by an aerial spray of pollens so thereby it you can you can you can prevent the problem of manual emasculation and it helps in improving the sort of a it helps in getting down the sort of a cost of the hybrid seed so male sterile lines enable ma prevent manual pollination and we can do artificial aerial pollination and similarly when you take basmati rice it is you, as i understood you can you can easily break it for both abiotic and ab and uh, biotic stress now when you take transgenics you understand if you take papaya papaya is resistant to ring spot virus tomato for pseudomonas pseudomonas is a very important sort of a wilt disease wilt disease and if you take potato that is against the sort of a, in potato it is against the sort of a late blight disease and so we understand when you take transgenics trans you can develop transgenics for resistance to both pathogens and pests and the transgenics also have applications in food processing it has got a very important application with relation to food processing technology it can also improve the nutritive value in the case of golden rice and it's also important for hybrid seed production as we have seen in the case of brassica campestris and transgenics also have applications with relation to biotic and abiotic stress as seen in the case of uh, primarily in the case of basmati rice so the potential applications of transgenics are with relation to improving nutri nutrition keeping quality keeping quality means frost resistant as in the case of tomato and resistance to bollworm infection tolerance to herbicide and also being high yielding and we we understand it is a, it plays a very important role with relation to prevention of night blindness now what exactly are the benefits and risks of transgenic crops when you take transgenic crops all transgenic crops always it helps the the benefits of transgenic crops now we would be making a comparison between transgenic crops what are the benefits and risks of transgenic crops
if you take the benefits and if you take the risks or what are the sort of a limitations the first important benefit or crop we have increased crop productivity the by transgenic crops you can definitely cause an improvement of the yield because we have a high yielding gene which can primarily enable the plants to grow and adapt to adverse environmental conditions it can lead to better crop production has implied for resistance to pesticides and also resistance to diseases for resistance to pests and diseases it can it can offer crop production third it can improve the nutritive value like has we had discussed with relation to rice nutritive value with relation to rice it can lead to better flavor has seen in the case of the flavor save a tomato the keeping quality of the vegetable can be improved upon has seen again in the case of frost resistant or maybe brewis resistant tomato in the flavor save a tomato is also brewis resistant that is it, it prevention of any sort of an injury you can get fresher produce which can remain year long there are environmental uh, benefits because it does not have the applica uh, the application of a sort of a pesticide or a sort of a fungicide and again they are tolerant to abiotic stress so when we address to the benefits we have eight benefits crop productivity high crop production high nutritive value flavor keeping quality fresher produce environment benefits and tolerance to abiotic stress now let's look at the limitations of the risks whenever a new technology comes in there is always the plus and minus of the sort of a technology but however in many situations the benefits will oh, can are greater than the risks and even when there is a sort of a risk if there is a problem there will always be solutions to the sort of a problem that's how primarily science has evolved so in the perspective of good biotechnology good good biotechnology has got lot of applications in the 21st century now the possible risks or the limitations of biotechnology is it can lead to the development of allergens this is the common sort of a fear among humans so its social or ethical acceptance is questionable because it may lead to lot of allergens there could be a build up of toxicity it is believed that when we have transgenic crops the toxicity build up within the sort of a plants could be very very high and there is lowered antibiotic resistance by the crop because as we understand when you do transgenics there is high possibility that even the sort of microbes which cause a disease can easily get mutated and they can change so it can lead to lowered antibiotic resistance there is a fear of gene escape a transgenic gene supposing we are planning a transgenic um, uh, tra planning to develop a transgenic crop while we are doing the breeding and supposing your pollen carries the sort of a foreign gene of interest if it is let loose if the if the pollens are let loose in a sort of a field in which there are more of weeds or more the more crops there is a fear that there could be a sort of a gene escape and it is sure that whenever we have transgenics a transgenic weed when it's developed it can develop into a sort of a super weed which is larger in size larger in biomass and it can compete with the local crop and we could have the more of weeds and less of crops and again the, the people are skeptic whether there can be a sort of an insecticidal resistance break because after a particular period of time definitely the insects as well as the pathogens because they are primarily microorganisms and microorganisms sporulate at a very fast speed and they become more resistant to any of these sort of a factors there is a fear that when we go for transgenics there is a loss of biological diversity there is variety and variability of life forms and the social and ethical acceptance so this way when we understand when you see transgenics transgenics have got have got both the benefits as well as risks as two sides of the same coin and the benefits primarily seem to outweigh the sort of a risks in the 21st century with 
the advancement of molecular biology, with the advancement of bioinformatics and with the advancement of technology which integrates like if you take a sort of a nanotechnology. If you take nanotechnology, nanotechnology primarily and biotechnology when they are fused together along with good science, a predictable science and also a sort of a very intense deep science, it can lead to several of the sort of a um, solutions to the present day problems in agriculture. Now, next we, I we would be primarily touching upon with relation to um, transgenic rice and in transgenic rice as I told you, we come across a very important word which is termed as biofortification. Now, what exactly is the meaning of biofortification? We are, we are finished on the risks and benefits and risks. We are about to enter into the entire study of transgenic rice or the form how golden rice has been a sort of a success story or maybe the golden rice is just like the sort of a Trojan horse. Like many people were, uh, have awaited what is the sort of a success or the failure of biotechnology in terms of the transgenic rice. Now, biofortification is a, is a method wherein primarily it is one component of plant breeding and in biofortification we aim at improving the nutritive quality of a crop variety, the total nutritive quality of a crop variety. And if a particular crop is enriched with vitamins and minerals or higher proteins for and also higher healthier fats and the most object, most important objective of a biofortified food is to improve the health of people. Now, when you take transgenic rice, transgenic in transgenic rice, there it has been genetically engineered. Transgenic rice has been genetically engineered by two important scientists called Potricus and Bayer from the Swiss Institute of Zurich. Primarily what they had done is, they had found out that when you take rice, rice has got an embryo and an endosperm and in the endosperm there is starch synthesis. So, they had manipulated or by genetic engineering, they had taken two genes from bacteria and one gene from daffodil and they had primarily synthesized beta carotene. So, when they synthesize beta keratin in the endosperm of rice, we could get transgenic rice and the transgenic rice had the sort of a precursor for vitamin A. The details of how the transgenic rice has been developed is now being illustrated. Now, specifically in uh, biotechnology and its applications in terms of food production, we are going to study the story of transgenic rice. Now, Transgenic rice is genetically modified rice or genetically engineered rice and it applies the principle of recombinant DNA technology. When you take transgenic rice, transgenic rice has been evolved by Peter Bayer, Peter Bayer and Potricus from the Zurich University at Switzerland. Now, what are the objectives of transgenic rice? It was believed that if rice is fortified with vitamin A, with it has got fortified with vitamin A, it can lead to prevention of vitamin A deficiency in children, that is blindness in children. So, keeping in mind that biotechnology is aimed at improving the quality of human life, biotechnology is aimed at improving the food quality. Both Potricus and Bayer have developed a very important sort of a transgenic rice to prevent blindness, preferably prevent blindness in children. Now, when you take rice, the transgenic rice has evolved into a very popular or a commercial name which is termed as the golden rice. So, what happens in the golden rice? There is biofortification, it is enriched, there is enrichment with nutrients. Which is the most important nutrient? Vitamin A is the most important nutrient. So, how do you get vitamin A? You get vitamin A when you synthesize, it is synthesized from beta keratin. Now, beta keratin is a precursor of vitamin A. Now, understanding that in rice, we have starch synthesis and starch synthesis occurs in the endosperm. 
both Potricus and Peter Bayer tried to genetically engineer the rice. So, they had the sort of a plan that when you take a normal rice plant, in a normal rice plant, you have a sort of a precursor called geranyl geranyl diphosphate. Geranyl geranyl diphosphate is a chemical which is a precursor which is present in the rice endosperm. Given geranyl GGD or geranyl geranyl diphosphate, it has evolved from or it has come from a compound chemical compound called IPP. So, they found out that rice lacks three very important sort of an enzymes. If you want to synthesize or if you want to get beta keratin, you require three very important enzymes. So, they had gone on a sort of a search for where the enzymes are present because if you take each particular enzyme, understand a gene determines a biochemical pathway. A gene, a DNA makes RNA, RNA makes proteins, proteins is equal to enzymes. So, thereby you have the gene which can make the sort of an enzyme and rice by nature lacks the three enzymes. So, in, if ever we could get in the sort of a gene and enable the sort of a gene to express in the endosperm coding for the sort of an enzyme, then maybe we could reconstruct the sort of a pathway. So, they were in the process of adding three genes to the sort of a pathway. So, produce the, the transgenic rice is produced from three important pathways with the adding three genes. So, that the pathway is very much complete. Now, we have to start with we have geranyl geranyl diphosphate which is a precursor. If to rice you add in by genetic engineering you add in the first sort of a gene which is a gene from daffodil. A daffodil is an ornamental plant, it is an ornamental weed, it is called narcissus. So, when you take the gene from daffodil, the gene from daffodil is responsible from that you can get an enzyme called phytone synthetase. Now, phytone synthetase is abbreviated as PSY. So, we have the first imp important input is from gene 1, you got, phyto you got phytone synthetase. It is very important that you remember the sequence of the genes and also the name of the sort of an enzymes. So, once there is phytone synthetase, you have the formation of phytone. So, geranyl geranyl diphosphate that is GGD is converted to phytone. Next, they had isolated two important genes from bacteria. From the bacterial gene, from the first gene from bacteria, where they had isolated a gene which codes for phytone desaturase. Now, phytone C desaturase is abbreviated as CRT. This is also termed as beta keratin or phytone desaturate, beta keratin desaturate or it is also termed as phytone desaturate. So, in the presence of phytone desaturate, phytone could go to form a sort of a red colouring pigment or an, uh, a substrate which is termed as lycopene. So, lycopene, the production of lycopene, the biosynthetic pathway of the uh, production of lycopene from phytone requires phytone desaturase, which was extracted, which was a product of the second sort of a second, uh, second gene or the first bacterial gene in the sort of a vitamin A pathway. Next, from lycopene, they are again taken from daffodil gene, they are taken a gene which codes for lycopene beta cyclase and it is abbreviated as LCP. So, LCY sorry, LCY lycopene beta cyclase is an enzyme which is coded by the daffodil gene that is the third gene in the biosynthetic pathway. Now, this results in the formation of beta keratin. We understand that beta keratin is a vitamin A precursor. Now, when you take the vitamin A precursor, this vitamin A precursor is responsible for the golden rice. It is responsible for golden rice where three genes are expressed in the rice endosperm. Now, when you take beta keratin, two beta keratin in an if we add ferritin, if we add ferritin, what is ferritin? Ferritin is an ion compound. Ferritin is coded by an ion coding gene from beans. If you take beans, fasciolus, fasciolus has got an ion coding gene and the ion coding gene is responsible for ferritin. If ferritin is added to beta keratin, there is an overexpression of beta keratin. Because there is an overexpression, that is, a gene get overexpressed, that is, more of the products are getting formed. So, an overexpression of beta keratin due to the addition of ferritin results in the color which is termed as yellow or golden, it is yellow or golden color. 
that is why we have the sort of a name of the genetically modified rice as golden rice it's called golden yellow rice or golden yellow rice and primarily it is present in the endosperm of rice so this has been a very important sort of a success story of transgenic rice whenever we take transgenic rice transgenic rice is one of the sort of a rices which mainly aims at sustainability and food security we can get sustainability because in the long run we have bio bio fortified we have a bio fortified rice with a gene in the gene for vitamin a is ingrained into the sort of a rice endosperm and it is a long term strategy for prevention of blindness and it relates to food security because we given food it relates to food security as well as it also relates to the pro, to the problems of sustainability would it be that maybe the transgenic rice is the sort of a first test of for biotechnology and genetic engineering and the partial success because there had been limitations there with the sort of a partial success definitely within a decade or two we could have several sort of an applications with relation to biotechnology in the context of food production <laughs>